want to show the video is actually different. I just want to make sure that anybody can just go using that API and with that website that I'm showing here, you can actually go and get the data you want. Uh, this actually helped me tremendously recently where I find out that my uncorking of my 75D wasn't actually done. And the reason I found that is just basically using the API and figuring out, hey, you know what, my PF config was actually P3 instead of P1. Uh, P1 is essentially when it's uncorked, P3 is when it's uh, basically as, as, as coming from factory. So here is a real life example of how that's priceless, you know, because Tesla, you know, although an awesome car and everything, Tesla services it still has a lot to be desired there. And you're always good to have that knowledge and being able to do things by yourself and just make sure that you can verify stuff that you've been told or you, you're you wondering what they are and how the, what your config of the car is, etc. And why, if there is an issue, why that is, you may be able to find some of the little uh, uh, things here. So let's begin with that. The first thing you want to do is have a browser and go to this address here. And I'll have it on the screen later on uh, in big letters so you can see. It's basically docs and tindor at uh, dot airplay dot io airplay. Uh, API area, I apologize. API area is basically a service that allows you to pull, uh, to create full documentation on, uh, on uh, application program interfaces. Uh, basically, uh, services that are exposed uh, as uh, REST services, etc. This allows you to have documentation on them and have a very nice way to actually not only read what it's supposed to do, but actually execute on them so that you can get the results right away. And this is the beauty of this site, that you don't have to have any other tool to do it. It's just one browser, you go there, I'll show you what you have to do, and you get results right away. So that's why, why this is so awesome. Uh, we have to give credit to Tim, who actually did this and specified all the documentation in this nice way, using that service. Uh, I think a uh, big kudos to him for doing and putting that effort, because it's priceless for uh, users right now and uh, easy to, to do just a tremendous help to, to get this uh, and because otherwise you have to do through different tools and ends up being a little bit restrictive to the user base. So let's begin with uh, with what we're trying to do here. First thing we want to do is when you open the page you see that this is the title, introduction, whatever, and then you got the authentication. So in order to, to give you an idea of how the process works is first we have to authenticate uh, against Tesla server and say who we are. We have to provide username and password etc. Once we get once we do that, then Tesla is going to give us a token, which is basically like a, you know, like a, um, like a check mark, like a symbol, or whatever you want to call it, that basically identifies you on their servers from that moment on. And you have to provide that uh, token with every request to the server, and we will show you how to do that. Uh, once you do that, then the next step will be okay. Now we need to get uh, a vehicle identification. And in order to do that, you'll see the list of vehicles thing. And once you do that, you can actually list the vehicle, see your vehicle ID. And now you have the unique identifier on Tesla servers of your, of your vehicle, of your Tesla. And once you do that, then you can actually go and do all these state and settings things with your vehicle ID. And what we're going to do just for sake of bravery here will be the vehicle state. And then you can do the others probably using the same way. It doesn't have to... Oh, um, I don't think it will be that much different, but let's let's start and then we can play with the others if we have the time and, and if it's really any different than what you can do with the uh, with the vehicle state, for example. So, first thing we'll do is um, we will click on um, get access token and once you click on it, this is how it will look if you haven't clicked on it, no action selected. So we want to select an action which will be get an access token from Tesla. and. What you can see is if you go back to the example here, this is how you switch between the actual documentation with everything or just an example of basically a, a, a way to actually execute this. Uh, if you switch back to the example, you see this is the attributes that you have to provide for your request. So let's, let's just uh, copy paste them from uh, another place and I will explain them one by one. So let's switch to the console. And we're going to go to the body, and we're going to paste first what the uh, uh, what the parameters are and what is it required here. Uh, the client ID and the client secret, he actually provides in the link here. So if you click here, that's where they come from. Grant type is password. Email is your email. Password is your password of your uh, access. And he actually specifies this here, information from your teslamotors.com user login. So this will be your credentials to access Tesla uh, uh, when you go to tesla.com and you try to log in there. The next thing we need to do after the body 
And actually, let me switch quickly so you can see what I did. I basically specified in the body of the request what the grant type is, which basically is hard-coded a password, uh, the client ID which was provided by him in this link, the client secret that was provided by him in this link, my email, and my password. Uh, so that's what we actually have here. Now, if you read more in the documentation, it says that it has to have a header which has a content type of application JSON. So we got to make sure that here in headers, we have that. So um, let's see if we can quickly copy that. So we're going to do a header here that will be content type and it will be application JSON as the value. So this is a key, key value pairs. This will be the key, this will be the value. So that's what we have right now. So basically what we did is we specified a header value of content type application JSON and a body which we just specify this. This is how it needs to look. This is basically a JSON format of your uh, of the parameters that are needed to make the request. And now we're going to click here. We're going to hit production, meaning we're going to hit Tesla live Tesla server, and we're going to wait and hope to get a better, the right response. Uh, so it says calling resource, and here we go. We got uh, we got the response, and we got a response to 100, which means success. Okay. So now what we have here, if you look at the body here, is what we need. This is the access token that we need in order for us to continue our journey here, right? So next thing we want to do after you get this piece of information is, let's copy it, well, let's quickly copy it here. Okay, so now we have that. Now let's move down to the vehicles collection, right? And next thing we want to do is click on this action, which is list all vehicles. So we'll click on this. And we're going to be presented with exactly the same interface, which is awesome because we know how to work with it practically already. So um, let's first see what we need, what is needed here for this. In order to do this, it's a get request. So we will need, uh, it's actually already done for us. Uh, it's already specified here that it will be a get. So that's fine. We don't need to change anything there. And then basically it says that application content type has to be this. And it needs to have a header with this uh, token that we just got. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to go here and right away this is actually done for us. We don't have to do that. We're going to replace this access token with the one we copied from the previous one. And actually it remembers them away. So you can go back and forth for example. You can go here if you didn't get it and just you know uh, copy and paste it again. You know here we go. Copy and paste and then go back here and remember where we are and everything. So that's awesome. So basically what we're doing here is we're getting, we're doing a get um, request to the owner API and we want to get the vehicles there with this, uh, uh, with this uh, bearer token that we have. Uh, and let's see what happens when we do that. Here we go, we got another 200 which is awesome. And here we go, we actually got information about our car. We got the VIN number, we got the name, we got a bunch of configs that we have for it, we got the actual ID of the car etc. So your actual ID, and this is very important to understand, your actual ID is under ID underscore S. It's not under VIN, it's not under vehicle ID, it's not under ID. So that, that took me a while to, <laughs> to, to figure out because I mean I thought it's actually vehicle ID since the value, the, the name of the uh, parameter uh, is the one that we're going to actually have to fill in the next, um, in the next uh, call but it turns out that it's this one so that's that's something to remember and to have in mind and here you can see a bunch of parameters so now you know what what's the status of your vehicle is right you see you get an id you get a bunch of options that you got you get a state that it's online is not in service uh, what the id is is the remote start enabled is the calendar and a bunch of other stuff so that, that's pretty cool because I mean, that's live data of your vehicle right so the next thing you, we want to do is here we are state and settings. That's where things get really interesting because that's what where you can actually see a lot of stuff about your car. So let's say we want to go to vehicle state, right? I click on vehicle state and we want to switch to the stuff that it actually uh, would like us to provide. And again, we asked to do the authorization bear, which you already did. Uh, now it, the interesting thing is that it accepts a parameter of vehicle ID, the one we copied in. The previous example here, which is the one we you know, switch back to the zone, which is the one we, we specified, we, we mentioned that it's important here, right? That's the one we need. So we copy that, we go to vehicle state, and um, here it asks us again to pass the bearer, which is fine, we'll do that. Here we have to go to URI parameter because this is the parameter that is provided here in the URL and just paste your ID. So now this becomes the request that it wants to do and the only thing we're missing is in headers 
we're missing again the thing that we did in the previous one. Let's go get that because I already used a copy and paste and I overwrote the one I, I had. So let's just copy this one again. Go back to vehicle state and paste that here. So let's uh, quickly overview what we did. We went to vehicle state. Vehicle state was a little bit different than the previous one. It's still a get request. However, it requires a URI parameter now of our vehicle ID in order to get to it and give us the vehicle state. And as the other request, it requires a bearer token so that we can authenticate and do our stuff. So let's do that. Let's call and see what happens. See, we got another 200. Awesome. And now we actually have a bunch of configurations for our car. And this is the one that ended up being the, uh, the reason for uh, my uh, being me being upset at Tesla service was I already did the uncorking. I was supposed to be in P1. However, I'm on P3, so I called him, I'm like, dude, what's going on? I mean, I'm supposed to be, uh, on, my car is supposed to be uncorked on P1. He's like, oh, it was done already. I'm like, no. So long story short, it turns out that it wasn't, and it has to be P1. So this is why this API is awesome, and this is how, how this can be the base of your apps or the base of anything you want to do going forward, because this gives you a live view of your data. Nobody's going to give you more accurate data than this, because this is coming directly from Tesla servers. So, uh, as you can see here, it has the API version, it tells you the car version, basically the firmware you're on, what kind of car it is, uh, is the calendar supported, uh, exterior color, mine is pearl, um, locked, it's true currently, notification supported, what kind of, how many miles it has, what is the performance configuration, etc, etc. So, that is pretty awesome. I think, uh, I think the fact that you can do all this in, in a browser like this uh, should help a lot of people and make a lot of people feel calmer if if they don't use app or the app that you're currently using does not allow you to do that and even if it doesn't bottom line is this is the bare bones way of doing it this is how you get under the covers and you get the data that you need and and basically the information that you need for your car you don't have to you know even even you can write your own app you can do whatever you want but this is the base that you gotta that you build on top of so uh, he has a pretty extensive documentation again kudos to Tim for doing that it's awesome and hopefully that helps you guys going forward with your endeavors and we enjoy your Tesla. So thank you. And uh, if you like the channel, please subscribe, put us some comments if that helps you in any way, shape or form. So thanks again.